Steve from This Week With Cars and today I'm at Grattan Raceway in Grattan, Michigan. Today's race is put on by the VSCDA which is a vintage racing group. This weekend they're featuring a Sprite and Midget race which is why I brought the bug eye out. It should be a good race, they have about 29 entries so far. It's Friday right now, we just got done with a good day of practice. Tomorrow we have two sprint races and then the Sprite and Midget race at the end of the day. I just put the engine in my car two days ago, so I'm still working out a lot of things. It's been three years since I've driven this car, and when I went to pull it out, I found that I had robbed a lot of parts from it, so a lot of things are brand new on it. Almost everything has gotten an upgrade now. I finally went to dual master cylinders for my brake and clutch, and I now have fitted a twin set of SUHS4 carburetors. You can't really tell it because they're so banged up, but I've installed a new set of heavy duty shocks all around the car. My first two races after resurrecting this car from not having been raced for 40, 30 years, I had a lot of overheating problems. So now I fitted a new aluminum radiator and I've changed to a different oil cooler on the front of that. The way this car was being raced previously, you had to recharge the battery in between each run as there was no charging system. The belt just did a continuous loop from the crankshaft to the water pump pulley. I was racing it with a generator fitted, but I didn't have it connected to anything. Here I have fitted a dynamator, which is a tiny alternator inside an original looking generator casing. I wanted to keep this car looking as stock as possible. I've also fitted an 8 inch electric fan behind the radiator. This looks like a voltage regulator, but it's actually just a dummy box inside of it. it is a 50 amp fuse that connects this wire to these two terminals right here just provides a place to plug in all of your original wires if you want to keep your car looking original while using an alternator. And finally I have installed one of my catch cans in the footwell for the on the passenger side. This is a large catch can which is vented in this case out of the front of the engine and it has a little filter for a breather. I didn't have any extra time other than to just fire the car up and see if it drove around the parking lot. I haven't had time to tune it or do anything with it. So I came blind and my practice sessions today were my testing sessions. We'll see how the weekend goes. On the inside of the car, I've tried to keep everything looking fairly original there as well. I've added a Lucas voltmeter over here and a Stuart Warner oil temp gauge over there. But besides that, the dashboard is pretty typical for a Sprite. I didn't want to risk ruining one of the original hardtops if something had happened with this car. So this is a fiberglass Parrish hardtop. It might give me a little bit of a weight advantage, and I like that it looks like the original top. Not only have 29 sprites and midgets come to race this weekend, but we have two very special sprites here. One is the 1969 Le Mans prototype, the very last special coupe to be built at the factory. And the other is the Targo Florio 7, the last racing car to be built at the Warwick factory. Both of these cars have been on track with us this weekend. This is the very last factory built coupe and something very special about this car is it's fitted with a factory fuel injection kit. This is a 1275 A-Series engine, and the first thing you'll notice is the intake is not on this side. This is a cross-flow head, so they've relocated the generator, and they have throttle body fuel injection on the right-hand side of the engine. You can see it was equipped with a bespoke windshield wiper, it only works right in front of the driver there. You 
coming over to the right hand side of the car you can see why the generator was relocated they have a fuel injection pump here that's driven off of the crank I was told that they do have to time this belt very carefully the car does use a standard distributor it looks like it has much larger shocks than a standard sprite those could be off an MGB it has three Gerling master cylinders for the clutch front and rear brakes Looking inside the car, the first thing that stands out, it was fitted with a five-speed transmission. It has a very bespoke dashboard. The additional bodywork here on the back of the car is for aerodynamics only. It does not house anything more than what would fit into a typical Sprite. This very special car is also one of the last of its breeds the TFR7. This was the last racing Sprite built at the Warwick factory. This car was fitted with the same fuel injected engine as the Le Mans Coupe. Underneath the bonnet these cars appear to be very similar. This car is equipped with a hard tonneau cover over the passenger area. Here you can see the removable panel on the cam tail to access the fuel tank. And I believe both of these cars are fitted with the same Girling brake system, which was stolen from a Lotus. The TFR7 was originally fitted with these magnesium Healy wheels. Although I think these are reproductions of the original wheels, as the original magnesium wheels could have the potential to fail. Well, it's race day. We just had our driver's meeting. I have one more qualifying this morning, then two sprint races, and then we start the big event, the Sprite and Midget race. update on my situation it's Saturday it's right before the Sprite midget race I've run one practice session two qualifiers and two races and in the second race my clutch stopped working or the, the clutch pedal stopped working I still had a clutch
limped it back into the paddock. Now I'll have to get the car, see if I can fix it for the Sprite Midget race. If not, I guess I'll be watching from the sidelines. So I've gotten underneath the car and everything looks to be in place still down here. So, if I'm lucky, the problem is up top. Up here, it's got fluid. Linkages are here. It's just real soft. I shouldn't be able to push that in that far with my finger if there was resistance there. Obviously, the fluid's not leaking anywhere. So it must be a problem with the slave cylinder itself. So luckily, I did catalog all the parts that I brought with me. And I do not have a new clutch slave cylinder. I do have the push rod. But it says I have a used clutch slave cylinder. Maybe I can get that on in time. I was about to give up and think I didn't bring it, but here it is. That's why you keep a catalog of what your spares are. Okay, I've got a couple minutes left before the Sprite Midget race, but I am on the opposite side of the infield and I cannot get across the track until this race right now is over. So I'm gonna have to get strapped into my car with everything on, sitting on this side of the gate so that when that opens, I can go get in line immediately. I don't have a whole lot of confidence in my clutch, but, but I hope it'll work well enough to get through this race. it from Grattan here in Michigan. I did finish the Sprite race, but I was not able to shift all the time. I started out trying to shift at only one or two spots on the track. And then three quarters of the way through the race, my clutch pedal stopped working altogether. It was a lot of fun being out here with all these Sprites and especially the special Sprites that showed up to be with us this weekend. Here in the Midwest, we have a very active Sprite and Midget race group. So if you want to join us, grab yourself an old Sprite and a Midget and bring it to the track and join us. If you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.